Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Redneck Light. Today we're going to be replacing the voltage regulator on my Continental. And I'm also going to show you how you can do a simple test to figure out if it's your alternator or your voltage regulator. Let's get started. To show you what I'm talking about in my truck, most modern cars have the regulator built into the alternator, but these older Fords have an external regulator, meaning that there's going to be a little box like this. Usually it's on the fender or somewhere like that. That's going to control the uh, charging of your battery. A lot of times if your battery's not charging and the parts store says, oh, it's the alternator, definitely check this first because it's only like $15, $20 versus a lot more for an alternator. Not to mention these things are crap. These are three bad regulators that uh, I've had to replace before. That first one's the original Motorcraft that came in the Continental. It's bad. This one was actually on the truck before I actually moved the uh, working one from the Continental to the truck. And then this one I got brand new, but it was bad straight out of the box. Uh, but unfortunately, there's not really a good alternative other than, you know, just making sure you don't get the cheapest one. The other thing you're going to want to consider doing is the plug for the regulator is probably going to be really beat up. At least I found it with all the vehicles I've touched that have these external regulators. I guess it's a common enough issue because for like a dollar, dollar and a half, you can get a replacement harness. These terminals will get corroded. This wiring you can see is all chewed up. So I'm actually going to cut the end of this off and replace it with this. But for now, we can test it with the uh, old plug. So first thing you'll want to do is take a baseline reading of your battery voltage. Healthy battery should just be a hair over 12 volts when it's uh, sitting. I haven't started this car in a while, and of course it hasn't been charging its battery, so the uh, voltage is going to be a little low. So when your voltage regulator is bad and the car is running, you're going to be seeing about 11.5 to 12 volts. Um, that means your battery's not charging, and eventually it'll completely drain your battery, and you'll be stranded on the side of the road, like what happened to me once. Now, one really easy test that you can do, and it's in the Ford service manual, so it's a completely valid test, is to take a jumper wire. This is just a little bit of copper uh, wire here. And you can jumper these two terminals and look at, as you can see, it sparks a little bit, but you can jumper those two terminals and then test the voltage to see if it's your alternator or your regulator. If your regulator's bad, the voltage will read 14 and a half volts or higher. The whole point of the voltage regulator is to make sure your alternator doesn't overcharge your battery by providing too much voltage. Uh, by doing this test, you're bypassing the regulator and allowing that alternator to pass as much voltage as it wants to the battery. Doing this test for just a few seconds is not going to hurt the battery but doing this for an extended period will eventually fry it and probably other electronics in your car. If you do this test and you don't read any voltage spike, that means your alternator is probably bad. One thing to note is when you jump those two terminals, there will be a little bit of spark. So just kind of be aware of that and watch out for it. Okay, finally got the engine running. You can see right now there's no regulator hooked up, so it's reading that 11 and a half volts. Watch what happens when I do the jump jumper wire right here. Like I said, watch out for that spark. You can monitor the voltage over there, it's going up. That means the alternator's fine. It's just the regulator that's bad. And only do this for a few seconds, as you can tell, it's really clicking up voltage. I've got my new regulator here. It looks a little bit different from the older one, so I'm hoping that means it's going to work. Uh, you do want to make sure you bolt this to its mounting point before you start the car and test. My harness over here is all chewed up, so uh, and as I was messing around with this, <laughs> this uh, cable just fell out of it. Uh, technically, I don't really need it. This is a filter for the uh, radio. Still, these wires are so chewed up, I don't want to do a short and ruin a brand new regulator right off the bat. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off the end here and wire in the uh, new pigtail. Also make sure you disconnect the battery before doing it, because if you cut these and accidentally touch them together, you can cause sparks and things. So 
I've actually got a wireless battery disconnect here so I can uh, shut it off wirelessly. Check out my other video to see how that works. Okay, so I've got my new pigtail wired in. I put some uh, butt shrink connectors there. I had an extra wire on this white line. I just kind of taped, cut it and taped it over with some electrical tape just to prevent uh, shorting. But now I've got contacts that are not corroded. We'll plug it in. We got everything hooked up, got the plug in right there, and it's uh, bolted to the frame. So now all we got to do is turn the car on and check the voltage. Okay, it's the next day, and I have uh, charged the battery. And there you have it, cars running. We're now charging at a safe voltage with our new voltage regulator. So there you have it. It's an easy $20, $30 repair. Instead of going and replacing your alternator right away, check out the voltage regulator. See if that's the problem after all. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.